Hey guys, it's Max with Max Tech. After over two weeks of waiting and having this fancy stand in our office, we finally got the Pro Display XDR. This is Apple 6K Display. And in this video, we not only are going to check it out and give you guys our impressions, but we're also gonna be testing out a bunch of different computers with this display to see what works and what doesn't. I've got to say this packaging is insanely heavy and thick. The display is very well protected. Let's pull out this display and this is basically like a slate and it's extremely, extremely heavy. I've never held up a display that's this dense here. As you guys can see, Pro Display XDR. And on the back, geez Louise, this is, it's crazy. We're gonna bring it close here and bam. That's why I pay $1,000 <laughs> to have a stand that does that. No, I'm just, I'm completely kidding. So inside the box, we do have all of our cables and some accessories. Just like the Mac Pro's power cable, the Thunderbolt 3 cable and the power cable, they are both really high quality and braided. So I don't have the nano texture one. Um, I have the 5K LG display, which by the way, I will be doing a direct comparison against. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you wanna see that. I don't have any issues with the 5K display as far as reflections. So I did not spend the extra money for that. There, okay. Not bad, let's go up. I wanna stop there, stop there all the way up. Let's tilt back and unlock it. There you go, and I just heard it locked. So when you go into vertical, you can't go up or down. It actually locks in to make sure that you don't, you know, hit the stand here. Let's flip that switch again. Okay. And now we're back to adjusting. Not bad. Now before we go and attach all these computers and see what works, what works halfway and what doesn't work at all, let me give a big shout out to Micro Center for sponsoring our Mac Pro and Pro Display XDR content. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build or upgrade a PC or Mac. Micro Center has been an authorized Apple dealer since 1980. They have a dedicated Apple department with highly trained Apple sales associates. Aside from the iPhone, Micro carries the full lineup of Apple products, and they have the largest selection of third-party products made for Mac and iPad. Come into a local Micro Center today and talk to one of their Apple experts to order the specific Mac Pro configuration that best suits your needs. Check the link in the description to find a local Micro Center near you, or browse all of Micro Center's Apple products. All right guys, let's get into the testing. Yes, I'm wearing something different because I'm reshooting the second portion because things got a little bit interesting and I decided to add in even more systems. So let's start out with the new 11 inch iPad Pro. And yes, even though we do not have Thunderbolt 3 with the system, it is mirroring the iPad. If I go ahead and open up a YouTube video, we still do not get full screen playback and we are not getting HDR either, even though the display supports it. Plugging in my 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro, it does work, but everything is incredibly tiny here by default, which is weird for Apple, uh, and I am not getting any profile options, uh, any HDR, anything like that, and in fact, it's actually running at 4K resolution, not even 5K, and that's because I have Mac OS uh, Mojave running on here, not Catalina. Now, if you have a 2018 or 2019 MacBook Pro with Catalina, right away, you not only will see uh, the UI being larger, but it works like it's supposed to at 6K resolution. And we see, as far as our presets, the 1600 nit preset, which is the max this monitor it could do. So we're running in 10 bit HDR, and we have all of our profile options. So if you're gonna be editing photos, you want sRGB, you want DCI-P3, you want it to force it into always on HDR, you have all of those options. And this is the way the system was intended to work. All right guys, now it's the time to test out this 15 inch MacBook Pro, which has a horrible built-in display. And not only does the system not have Thunderbolt 3 or USB Type-C, it has Thunderbolt 2. So I'm using a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter that Apple sells. And let's go ahead and plug this system in. And you might be as shocked as I was to see that yes, it does work. It is running at 5K instead of 6K, 
but not only is it running and working over Thunderbolt 2, it is actually running with the profiles enabled. And I don't have Catalina version 15.2 installed, it's just 15 on here. And that's not supposed to like support the profiles, but the profiles are showing up. I am very surprised. I'm not sure if it's running in 10 bit or not, but seeing as we're having the 1600 nits HDR or XDR support, it makes it seem like it is. And if that is true, that is a shocker because there's so much systems out there that have integrated graphics, their Intel graphics with Thunderbolt 2. And if you can make this work with 10 bit HDR editing content, that's crazy because with a lot of other systems, Windows systems, you have to have a high end, say Quadro graphics card, but this has an Intel graphics card, but it does work and I was really, really surprised. If you have a 2019 iMac with Thunderbolt 3, it will run this display in full 6K with 10 bit, HDR, everything is gonna run perfectly fine, it's gonna work great. But if you have a 2017 or older iMac, it will actually only run in 5K resolution, even if you're connecting to an iMac Pro, because the Thunderbolt 3 controller's display port is actually an older design. You still get all the other benefits of the color accuracy, the HDR, the profiles, but you are limited to 5K. Now before we test out some Windows machines, including an Asus system with a Quadro graphics card, let me test out the Google Pixel Book Go. This is a Chromebook that I absolutely love as an i5 a CPU with Intel integrated graphics and a USB type C port. And when I plug it in, it's very interesting that the Pro XDR display actually shows up at the bottom of Chrome OS and it actually shows that it is seeing the system, it's mirroring the system and I can actually switch to extend displays as well. The display actually never powers on even though Chrome OS thinks it does. So who knows, maybe in the future, if it's a small setting or a driver, it could be updated to get it to work with this crazy display that costs uh, 12 times as much as this Chromebook. And now what a lot of you guys are waiting for, we have a Windows laptop here. This is a Dell XPS 2-in-1 with the uh, 10th generation Intel CPUs and graphics with uh, the full speed Thunderbolt 3 ports. And even though in the system, it actually shows up as a 5K display, it sees the name and allows me to change some settings. Um, no matter what I do, it is not working. And I actually went in and I updated the drivers to the latest drivers, it's a no-go. So let's test out a Windows system that has a much more capable NVIDIA Quadro graphics card. So here we have an Asus mini PC. It has a 9900K and a Quadro P4000 graphics card. And I was surprised that yes, it did connect and it is running and it's actually running at 5K resolution, not 6K. And another surprising thing was that I actually was able to enable HDR playback, which then showed up as 10 bit. Uh, the brightness did kind of get knocked down with HDR, but when we're playing back a video, it does seem that we're getting some good brightness. Now, one issue I came across like the other Windows systems is I cannot adjust the brightness of the display even with the HDR turned off. And when we're playing back in YouTube, we're only getting 4K HDR playback. The 8K option is missing. The same thing goes for Microsoft Edge's browser, but HDR works for both. Now, other than some internet issues that I'm having here, um, I am not actually getting good frames per second. It's stuttery, running at about maybe 12 to 15. And that is because it is actually not using the Quadro graphics card in here. It is just using integrated graphics. Um, so, that is kind of weird. I went through all the settings. I could not adjust it. So yes, this monitor does halfway kind of work with a system like this. Let's try out another laptop here. This is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. This also has 10th generation Intel CPU and graphics, but one thing it does not have is Thunderbolt 3. This is USB Type-C only, and I was shocked to see that yes, not only does it identify it, it automatically shows up and it is running. And not only is it running, it is running in six K, even though it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3, and this is a Thunderbolt 3 monitor as Apple is marketing it, just like my LG 5K, but my LG 5K cannot use USB Type-C to connect, 
it needs Thunderbolt 3. This is working, whereas the Dell XPS with the similar graphics card, but Thunderbolt 3 is not. Now it is running in 8-bit, not 10-bit. I am not getting HDR option. And it is easier to run at 6K resolution 8-bit, which is 16 million colors, compared to running at 5K with HDR 10-bit, which is actually 1 billion uh, different shades of different colors. So it can't run in that option, but still, I am really surprised that it works. And now this has got me thinking, I have to try a 16-inch MacBook Pro running Windows in Boot Camp and to see what happens. And it is running in 6K, 10-bit as well, and it gives me the option to turn on HDR. You know, one th option we don't get, just like with the other Windows systems, is the ability to change the brightness. And one really cool thing to see is that we actually have the option uh, to play back HDR video. If we look at the video on the MacBook Pro screen, we can see the whole sky is blown out. Just like if you're recording a uh, standard video with a DSLR, you can't get that full dynamic range in the shot, but if I just drag this window, bam, we not only have the shadow details there, the sky is perfectly maintained, just like you're looking at it with your eyes. Um, and I don't know how it comes through on our video because our video is not in HDR for now, but with the Mac Pro and this display, uh, we're hoping to start outputting HDR videos. And this is why this display is really exciting for us personally. We're able to see something that is much more realistic in terms of dynamic range than you can before. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. Um, I will be taking a look at those and maybe incorporating some of your guys' thoughts and questions into our review of the Apple Pro Display XDR. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Once again, thank you to Micro Center. You guys can find those links down in the video description. This has been Max with Max Tech. You guys can click that circle above to subscribe and watch one of our other great videos, maybe on Mac Pro right over there, and I'll see you in the next video.